Hi, Boing Boing readers. My name's Caitlin Scully, and I'm talking to you from the ocean drilling vessel, the Joides Resolution. Right now, I'm talking to you from near the rig floor, which is where we're drilling down into the seafloor of the North Atlantic to learn more about Earth's climate history. Why don't you take a look at all the cool stuff we're doing on board our two-month expedition? Hello. My name is Heather Burns, and I'm a marine laboratory technician on board the Geordie's Resolution. Today I'd like to give you a brief overview of how we process core for the core lab, from the time we receive it from the rig floor to the final stages of packing the core in the core reefer. It all starts out here on the core receiving platform. The marine laboratory technicians carry the core from the rig floor down here onto the catwalk. And what we do is cut the 9.5 meter length core into 1.5 meter length sections, just for easier handling through the core lab. And from there, we clean it and cap it with clear end caps for the bottom and blue end caps for the top. This is the core entry area where we enter all of the section lengths that we collected on the catwalk into the database. In addition, we produce labels for every single section on board the ship. This label has a barcode and a specific text ID that allows us to track the sections throughout the core lab and make sure that every piece of data that we collect will get attributed to the correct section. Once the cores have equilibrated, which takes about four hours for them to come up to room temperature, the first measurements that are taken on them are the physical properties measurements on the whole round multi-center tracks. We have a track here. You can see the core being pushed through right now. The interval of measurements on these tracks is centimeter scale. So you can just imagine how much data is collected, a lot. So after every section gets run through on the whole round multi-sensor tracks, we come into the core splitting room. And actually, this is perhaps the most exciting room in the core lab. Just imagine, this section here is the first time it's been exposed in millions of years. And we're the first ones that get to see it in here. So basically, what we do is split every single section into half, a working half and an archive half. The archive half is our permanent record, and our working half is a half that the scientists are allowed to work on. It's the side that they're able to probe and pick at and sample from. You can see here the scientists are actually sampling the cores. The samples that they're taking here may be chemistry samples or further discrete samples for the physical properties laboratory. This here is the archive half section table. This is where the core describers visually describe each and every section. Yeah, go for it. Many clays and seal-sized uh, rock fragments. Once all of the sections are measured in the core lab, they're brought over here and stored in these plastic D-tubes. And then they're brought downstairs to the core reefer where they're stored until port call where we ship them out to the repositories. So when it comes to understanding Earth's climate, what we really need is essentially a continuous picture of the dynamics of what's been going on with the climate and what's been going on with the organisms that are living in those different climate regimes. So if you imagine a, like a movie, like The Matrix, if you only had like five pictures from the whole movie, it'd be really hard to put together the picture of how dynamic the action is and what the storyline actually is. And we have the same problem when it comes to understanding Earth's history. In most places, if you're up on the top of a mountain, you only have a few snapshots of Earth history. But here in the open ocean, we essentially have a high definition video of, of Earth's climate history and the response of organisms. So what we're doing out here on this boat is we're taking advantage of that high def video. And so in the last two months, we've brought up over six kilometers of core onto the ship. And after we brought up those six kilometers, we've taken over a million measurements on more than five different machines. And those measurements, those millions of measurements, are going to allow us to put together this, this highly resolved, dynamic picture of Earth's history and the response of organisms. So one of the rules with ocean drilling is to expect the unexpected. And one of the very unexpected things at the beginning of this expedition was is that we found a very, very thick sequence of sediments um, that were a lot younger than the targeted Eocene, very warm intervals of time that we were hoping to collect. Um, and one of the things is it was very, very green. And it was, um, I don't know if I'd call it affectionately referred to, but certainly called the green monster. And so this is now one of the mascots of the cruise is this little guy here um, that we fashioned in honor of 
the green monster and um, now rather than thinking of the hundreds and hundreds of meters of green sediment we think of sort of more of the fun times and this is one of the things that we do while working long 12-hour shifts to sort of keep our sanity. Sometimes it really is the little things that help us get through these long shifts. I mean, it is a dry ship. So here in the geochemistry lab, we have things like William Shatner to keep us company when you're weighing on the con balance for hours at a time. All joking aside though, it's tools like the con balance that really help us do science at sea. It takes over 200 measurements just to compensate for the motion of the ship. If we didn't have tools like this, we would have to measure all of our samples back on shore. If you want to learn more about the awesome science we've been doing on Expedition 342, you should just check out our YouTube page. All you have to do is look up Ocean Leadership.